CVOC is a research project focusing on innovation and industrial change in the oil and gas industry. Our ambition has been to understand how the oil and gas sector, as an example of a natural resource sector, has developed and the role of innovation in industrial transformations. We have studied the development of the Norwegian oil and gas sector from the late 1990s and until today. Specifically, we have looked at three broad transformations that also mirror development trends in the global oil and gas industry. These trends can be described as increasingly technology intensive, increasingly global and diverse in competencies and applications. In terms of the first trend, we assume that the oil and gas sector constitutes a highly innovative resource-based industry where innovation activities are distributed across a number of players. Our job has been to empirically measure the mode of innovation in the oil and gas sector and its influence on firms' value creation. So what I see in my study is that the oil and gas industry is a highly innovative resource sector. Compared to other industries, the oil and gas companies and the supplier companies in collaboration, they represent a significant part of the innovative capabilities in Norway. What is also characteristic about the petroleum industry is that the collaboration between the users and the supplier of the technology is unusually high. So as in this industry, as, as in other the highly technological industries, the locus of innovation is in the network between the companies instead of in one single firm. We have also looked at how the innovation model is challenged under periods of economic turbulence. My role in the CIVAC project was to understand how the industry downturn following the fall of prices in 2014 played out for the suppliers in the, on the Norwegian continental shelf. My research led to two main messages. The first one is that the industry downturn makes innovation activities difficult to sustain. The second message is that while the crisis or the industry downturn may be an incentive for these companies to come up with new solutions, it is often very difficult to do so in practice. So the saying that you shouldn't really waste a good crisis definitely holds in this case, but it's not straightforward for the companies how they should actually achieve, and, uh, achieve that and approach engaging in innovation during an industry downturn. On the second issue, we have looked at the relationship between development of technological capacity in the home market and the extent to which these experiences have offered supply companies a platform to reach international markets. The Norwegian offshore supply industry in many ways has become a showcase of how to operate in a globalized economy. This was not always the case because it started uh, with a very protectionist policy where Norwegian state supported the development of advanced technological uh, Norwegian firms. But in the 1990s everything was open up. It was free for foreign companies to buy up Norwegian companies and Norwegian companies they went abroad and bought up companies uh, in other countries. And uh, during the 2000s they became part of a global web of international firms very successful going into other markets. Markets like uh, Brazil, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, Asian countries. We got a very global integrated production system where Norwegian advanced technology was developed here, sold to uh, Korean shipyards, then exported uh, uh, from Korea to Norway and to Brazil and to Gulf of Mexico, where Norwegian equipment, advanced equipment, uh, was a key part. On the third theme, we have looked at diversification of the supply industry in terms of the different markets that supply companies are involved in. I've been involved in studying why petroleum supply firms attempt diversification into new markets, as well as analyzing the challenges they face in the process. Our results show that firms in the supply industry are extremely diverse and that they possess and continuously develop new competences that they deploy across several industries. It also means that there is a potential for using that existing knowledge to expand economic activities in numerous other industries. The ability of supply firms to use their knowledge bases in other industries as well paints us a picture of how Norway can move beyond oil in an industrial sense when the time is right. The Norwegian continental shelf is maturing and the industry is facing pressures to transform. The long-term development prospects are uncertain. So the question on everyone's lips is, can the oil and gas industry and its many suppliers have a role in transforming the economy? My research in the CIVAC project has focused on sustainability transitions and uh, diversification of oil and gas industry in offshore wind power. 
My results show that uh, building new industries uh, like offshore wind out of the competencies of oil and gas industries is not an easy or a straightforward process. Changes in demand or market fluctuations can also be an important factor. And we have found out that uh, many firms were more active in offshore wind when the core oil and gas market was struggling. Therefore, they did not always stay active in offshore wind when the oil price picked up again. This is not very good from the point of view of uh, building uh, new industries. If many companies try to just, uh, just use offshore wind to fill in gaps in oil and gas market, because then uh, they are not really, really fully committed for, to building this new industry in Norway. So the challenge for industrial transformation in Norway, can we draw upon the past successes in the oil industry whilst also breaking established paths?